today it's not looking as bad as it did a few days ago, okay. but that's just because there are some signals from within China that perhaps what we're going to see is restructuring rather than uh, right. a bailout or a default of this huge company. We're talking about a $300 billion debt. That's a wow. debt that is as big as uh, Russia's debt, for example, as a state. Uh, it's one of the biggest real estate companies in the world, um, one of the biggest uh, in China, and it's currently on the verge of default. What we've seen in the last uh, few days is basically the company missing two payments of interest uh, abroad, though, not locally, right. signaling perhaps that they're putting more attention and more focus on returning their commitments to local uh, uh, entities rather than to global entities. But still, the next few days are going to give us probably more indication as to where it's going. And there are three options on the table, as we said. There is a bailout by the government, probably unlikely, as we've seen in the US in that model. There is the option of restructuring. I would say that's more probable. And then the option of default. I don't assume that the Chinese government, knowing China, would allow such a huge entity to collapse so quickly. Well, tell us, tell us more about Evergrande, Ariel. How did it even get in this grave position to begin with? One of the reasons is that this huge company started diverting a few years ago to all sorts of business verticals that weren't exactly in its line of specialty. So they're a real estate developer. They have developments in hundreds of cities across China. Um, right now, they're, by the way, still building 1.6 million apartments of homeowners that have paid for their property and haven't received it yet. They also have financial services. So there is more than 80,000 people in China who are waiting to, to, to see what's going to happen with their financial assets by Evergrande. But other than those, they have theme parks, they have bottled water, they have built a football stadium, wow. they have a football team, um, you know, and, and it's just it's so many verticals and analysts say in China, within China, that they just didn't know how to manage all of them very well. And they kept on borrowing and borrowing and borrowing to fuel their growth, and they just did so a bit too much. At the moment, all of these people who are waiting for their apartments and also the ones who have you know, financial assets within the company are, of course, hysterical. Some of them are even protesting in China, which is something that you don't see very often in China. You certainly don't know. Many people are drawing comparisons to the Lehman Brothers collapse uh, of 2008. Do you believe that this is going to be the Lehman Brothers story of China? No, I don't. I don't think uh, China can be compared to the US with more or less anything. Um, it's, it's bigger, it's uh, stronger, it's more financially viable. And I doubt that it would allow 1.6 million citizens to lose their homes um, and, and even more people to lose those financial assets. What we're probably going to see um, is a, a sort of restructuring. Yes, there are many comparisons to the Lehman Brothers story because we're talking about a huge company. And you know, its default could drag so many other companies uh, into a domino effect in China. But probably the, the state-owned enterprises in China is a tool that China is going to be able to utilize at this point, um, make sure that these apartments are completely built and create a restructuring of that giant Evergrande that can survive this crisis. Okay, Ariel Margalit, I24 News host, economy analyst, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, Jeff.